Welcome to this video on three simple ways you can automate your inbox in Microsoft Outlook. So I'm going to walk you through three different examples. I have done videos on these before, but I thought it'd be really great to pull them together so you can see them working in one go and it'll hopefully help you work out which ones might work best for you or if you want to put all three of them into place. We're all super busy. We all probably get quite a few emails that maybe we don't need to deal with or we don't need to deal with right now. And it's so easy to get distracted by your inbox and focus on something that is just not relevant at that point in time. I am so easily distracted. So these options, these automization processes work really, really well for me. And I'm going to go through rules, I'm going to go through quick steps, and then I'm going to go through conditional formatting. And just to confirm, I am in the new Outlook, and I'm also going to use Outlook Online for part of one of them, because it doesn't work in the new Outlook. If you're in a different version of Outlook, you might just see it looks a little bit different, and you might be missing one or two bits of functionality. But let's jump in and let's start with rules. So rules are something that you set up in advance to tell Outlook if you get an email with this condition, you need to do that with it. And these will run automatically. So once you set them up, you do not need to worry about them. They'll just run in the background and do whatever you tell it to do until it stops. Now, there's two ways of creating a rule. You can create a rule in general using the functions at the top. If you see, I'm in the Home tab. And on the right hand side, there are three dots. If I click on that, you'll see I have the rule option and create rules. But what I find a lot easier, especially if you've got an email in your inbox that you want to design a rule for, then if you go from that email, then Outlook will automatically populate some of the information for you and make suggestions to make your life a little bit easier. So my example in this video, we're going to do something with this Microsoft Viva emails that I get quite often because they can be quite useful, but I don't want them blocking up my inbox and I want to be able to focus on the emails that I need. So I have selected a Microsoft Viva email and then you can see a bit of a preview on the right hand side. If you go to that preview section, you'll see you've got another three dots. Click on that one. And then if you scroll to the bottom and go to advanced options, you'll see you've got create rule. When you do, you get a very small pop up that is going to try and give you a very simple, quick way of creating a rule. So it's saying always move messages from Microsoft Viva into this folder. Now, if that's going to work for you, if you can select the folder that you want to move them into and you want to move them into a folder, that's cool. Again, it's just suggesting what you might want to do with those emails. But if you want to add a more complex rule or change it up a little bit or see the whole thing in action, then click on more options. And that's what I'm going to do. And I've just made that pop up so it fits nicely in the recording window. So now you can see a little bit more detail. So let's go through each section so we know exactly what we're doing. So we can see for all messages from Microsoft Viva. And then underneath that is add a condition from Microsoft Viva. So that's what type of email that this rule is looking for. Anything from Microsoft Viva. I can also add another condition if I want specific emails from Microsoft Viva. That might be relevant for a different type of example, but you can add multiple conditions so you can be as specific as you want to be. And then once you've told Outlook what it's looking for, you need to give it an action. So what do you want Outlook to do with those emails? And you can add multiple actions. So when I click on select an action, you can see I've got some organization options like moving or copying or deleting or pinning. I've got, I can mark messages as red as junk and I can route them to different places. I can forward them or redirect them. I'm going to move these. So I'm going to move to, and then you'll see I've got another drop down where it's going to ask me what folder I want to move them to. And if the folder doesn't already exist, I can create a new folder or see the full list of folders if they don't appear here on this drop down. I'm going to drop mine in deleted. And remember what I said before, you can add multiple actions if you want. So you might want to mark it as red or do something else with it. If you open up 
to add another action or add another condition and then you don't do it, just remember to close that down by the cross and keep it nice and clean on this screen. So I've got whenever an email comes from Microsoft Beaver, I'm going to move it to the deleted items. That's the rule. And remember, that's going to run automatically. I don't need to click on anything. It's just going to happen. Scroll down, you can see the one option that I would suggest having a look at is run rule. Now, it's not automatically ticked, but if you tick that, it will run through your inbox and see if there's anything in there that this rule is relevant to, and it will run it on that email. And obviously, as soon as I click on save, it will be running from that point onwards until I come into my settings, into rules and delete it. So let me click on save. And you can see there I've got my rule in place. If I wanted to edit it or delete it, then I've got the pencil or the rubbish bin. And anytime you hover over anything, it will show you the info. So that play button is run rule now, and it will just run that process and manage anything that needs to happen. So this is only relevant really if you already have those emails in your inbox and you'd want it to process them. From this point on, if I get any emails from Microsoft Fever, they will automatically go in my deleted items. So I'm just going to come out of and you can see I've lost that Microsoft Viva email. So it's running that rule and it might take a few seconds depending on your connection, but then it's dropped those emails out. So rules will work for any type of email. You've got conditions that you can add to them and then actions. So it may be that you want to move all your project emails into a folder. You want to move all of your what you would call just reading emails into a folder and you decide what rules you want to set up and they will happen automatically. Quick steps is the second option. It's a little bit different. You set up your rule, but you enable it. You click to make it happen. So this doesn't have to be as specific as a specific email from someone. You can define yourself because you are going to have to make this action happen when you want to run it. But this maybe you want to create a task from certain emails or you want to do pin certain emails. You can create a quick step and then you can define which emails you want this to run for. So you don't have to be as specific with those conditions. Now with quick steps, I can't actually set them up from the new Microsoft Outlook. So I do need to go into Outlook Outline. Just let me scroll to the top and I'm still in the application i'm still in new outlook and you can see in that bar at the top it does say quick steps and it does say if i click on that drop manage quick steps but you'll see i'm in actually that same screen i was in a few moments ago i've been settings but there is no quick steps option available there i can't actually create and manage them in my Outlook application, but I can do it in Outlook Online, which looks pretty much the same. So let me just close the application down for a second and have a look at Outlook Online. And I am now in Outlook Online. I'm using Google Chrome. And you can see at the top, just like before, I've got the Quick Steps option, I've got the drop down, and I've got Manage Quick Steps. Now, in here, actually, you'll see it looks a little bit different. I've got more options there, and Quick Steps is available. And like I said, these are really similar to rules, but you don't set the condition. You define when that condition is relevant and you have to click to make it happen. But it's only one click. So again, it still speeds up the process of whatever you need to do. So you might want to define something that you would generally do quite often from your emails, like doing tasks or pinning things to the top or something. And then you can set a quick step up. So it will just run that rule whenever you want it to. So clicking on a new quick step, let's have a look. You can name and you want to be really specific about the naming. So let's create a task. And then you're not going to set up a condition because you're the one that's going to click to run this rule. So you just need to define what your action is. And you can see when I click on that, there's actually quite a load of options here. You've got tags, you've got flagging, you've got pinning, you've got filing, you've got changing your status, you've got forwarding, loads of different options. But in the tag section at the bottom, you've got the create a task because that's relevant to the quick step that I just added on there. You can also see you can add multiple actions. So by clicking this quick step, you can get it to create a task. I can also add another action, click on that and mark it as red. 
So that might help just enable me to manage my inbox a bit better. And you can add as many as you want. And obviously, if you add one that you don't want, click on the cross to remove. And then if you look at optional at the bottom, you can add a description and select a shortcut if you want. Now, there's so many shortcuts that I use and I do flick between uh, Windows and Mac. So I just find it easier to click on the create, uh, click on the quick step button and run this rather than to do shortcuts. But if you want to, then you can absolutely add a shortcut to make this even quicker for you. So I'm just going to click on save. And that's now given me a create task quick step. So let's just do another quick one so we can see multiple there. So I'm going to do one for pin emails. Pin email. And then my action is going to be pin. And remember, I can pin emails to the top of my inbox so that it focuses my eye and makes those stand out so that I know I need to action them and they're right in front of my face every time I go into my inbox. Again, I'm going to leave the description and I don't want a shortcut, so I'm just going to click on save. And now I've got two there and you can see I've got some arrows so I can actually reorder them. So you want to put the one on top that you're going to use the most often. So you reduce the amount of clicks that you need to do to make these happen. And again, you've got a pencil if you want to edit and you have a rubbish bin if you want to delete that quick step at any point. But let's come out of here. And just to show you that this does work now in the application, let's head back to the application from so reopen the application there. And what I will see now is I will have some quick steps available to me. And you might need to just refresh to make this happen. But you can see now on the top banner where it said quick steps previously, you can now see I've got the create task option. So that's the quick step that I created. When I click on that, it will automatically create a task for this email. But I did create two, remember, so let's just have a look and click on that drop down and you'll see I've got the pin email option as well. So I've got both of those quick steps and remember they're really similar to rules, but you have to enable them. So you don't need to define those conditions, you define them. So if there's no way of creating a condition that will capture every email that you want to do a certain action with, then quick steps is really going to help you out with this because you are the one that will define that condition and to just make this happen i'll click on pin email and it will automatically do that pinning for me i don't have to click on anything i don't have to hover on anything else and let's do as well let's create a task so it's going to create a task from that email for me and follow through with that process as well so you can see it's gone into the to-do it's popped up there and it's just created a task for me really nicely. So you can have as many as you want, define them how you want, but if you've got some emails that you want to do specific things to, but you can't really define that condition because it might change each time, but if you do a lot of similar tasks to a group of emails, then this is going to really help for you. And all you need to do is select that email, go up to that top bar and either click on that one that you would do all the time or click on the drop down and select the quick steps that you will go, you want to happen to that email. Remember, you can only edit these. If you're in the new Outlook like myself, you can only edit them in Outlook Online. And when you come back to the application, you might just need to do a quick refresh and they'll show up at the top, but really easy to work with. So that's the second option. The third one I mentioned is conditional formatting. And this is really useful because you can color code your emails. So again, let's talk, let's just go back and think we can create rules that will automatically run by condition and do certain things with those emails. We can create quick steps, which will run when you tell them to run. So you don't have to be specific with a condition. But, and you can also color code your emails to help identify these emails that you might want to deal with. So if you 
want to color code certain emails and then you might do different tasks with them using quick steps you can group these automation things together really nicely and it might just help them pop out within your inbox and help you then run those quick steps or manage them in whatever way you want to manage them but it just helps to help you focus on what you need to do so let's just have a look at this conditional formatting so i'm going to go to the view tab I'm in the application again, and I'm going to go to view settings. And when I'm in view settings, to make this sit really nicely, I want to go to conditional formatting. So in conditional formatting, I'm going to create a new conditional formatting rule, and I'm going to name my rule. So let's do a CC. Let's say I want to highlight any time that I'm CC'd into an email. So I can do a quick roll to it to move it in a different place or something else. Let's look at the conditions so you can see what's going on. I can check, I can color code emails from specific people. If I'm on the to line, the to or the CC line, if I'm not on the to line, if I'm not on the CC line, and also if the subject includes something specific. So let's just do I'm on the CC line. And you can see I've got the ability to add another condition again. So very, very similar to rules and quick steps, which is why I've pulled all three of these together into the same video for you to make your life easier. You can see I've got similar options, but it's dropped it down. So it's only showing me those other options that I could add as well. So I've called it CC. The condition is I am on the CC line. And then I need to choose a font colour. So I want to choose a colour that's going to pop out for me. So let's go with red. And I get a little preview. So click on OK there. Scroll down. I'm going to make sure I get rid of that row that I added, which is why save is not showing at the bottom. So just in case you get that error, just make sure you've not got any rows that you've not completed. And when you're happy, click on save. And you can see I've got CC there. I've got a toggle to turn it on and off. So I don't have to delete it. I can turn it on and off and then put it back on again if I want it to be, if I want it to be turned on at some point and not at another. And I can obviously create multiple ones as well. So I'm going to come out of there and go back and have a look and create an email where I am CC'd in. So you can see what that looks like when it comes through. Before I create an email for myself, if I do scroll down, you can already see one there. I have that in red. So I must be CC'd onto that email. Probably not many of them. But if I am, they will show up in red. So I'm going to just send an email to myself and then we'll see me CC'd in. Okay sent myself a quick email where I'm cc'd in just to show you how this one works and you can see there at the top I've sent myself an email about project planning and because I've cc'd myself in that and it fits my condition with my conditional formatting it's popped through it's bright red it's nice and easy to see I can now go in and action it I can use the quick steps that I have created already to do something with it. And it just automates as much as possible and makes my life as easy as possible. So there's three quick ways here, nice and simple, no extra tools that you need to know, no extra knowledge that you need. It's all within Outlook. Create rules which automatically run, create, create quick steps which are very similar to rules, but you run them whenever you want them to run and then create conditional formatting, which are very similar to rules and quick steps from a condition point of view. And you can color code your emails to help you manage them even better within your inbox. So hopefully a mix of these or all of these together will help you be more productive in Microsoft Outlook. I use all of these all the time. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and let me know what videos you'd like me to record next.